in the brief history of cryptocurrency, there stands one towering figure, Arthur Hayes. More than any other, he epitomizes the very ethos of the industry, the ethos of opportunism and rebelliousness. He sees the opportunity to make a fortune by enabling millions to bet and speculate on the already volatile cryptocurrencies, essentially selling shuffles to the gold diggers. His sharp tongue and larger-than-life persona elevated him to be the most noticeable figure on crypto. But this also made him an easy target. Ultimately, he pissed off the powerful people in Washington and was made an example to the broader industry through unprecedented criminal charges. So how could his meteoric rise turn to such disaster? What triggered his dramatic downfall? This is the story of Arthur Hayes, the greatest showman in the crypto industry. Arthur's journey began in middle-class Buffalo, New York, far from the financial epicenters of the world. His father was a loyal employee of General Motors, where the frequent ups and downs of the automotive industry resulted in a constant feeling of economic instability. This environment triggered Arthur's relentless ambition and his later fondness for extravagant life. Nevertheless, his mother Barbara saw something special in young Arthur, determined to give him a brighter future his parents worked tirelessly to get him into Nichols School, a renowned institution for gifted children. Arthur, in turn, did not waste this opportunity. Friends from his school days still remember him as a standout, graduating second in his class and earning accolades in varsity tennis and cross country. Arthur's journey continued to Wharton, another prestigious institution where he studied economics. It was here that the complexity of his character began to crystallize. You see, Arthur always does everything with an unmatched intensity. During debates over economics or financial topics, he would ferociously tear down those he felt were underinformed or illogical. His intensity often crossed into intellectual bullying, a habit that would bring huge consequences later in his life. However, this same intensity is miraculously translated into charisma and social settings. Arthur's legendary parties became a staple in Wharton, where he shifted from an intimidating debater to a charming host in an instant. This blend of intensity and social charm highlighted the different sides of Arthur that will echo throughout his life. When I graduated from high school and I studied Chinese in school, um, I never got fluent, unfortunately, got a little lazy, but I went out to Hong Kong as a study abroad student in 2006 mm. for a semester. And then I was like, I'm moving here. After Wharton, Arthur talked his way to a prestigious trading role at Deutsche Bank, Hong Kong. The move to Asia wasn't just a career choice. It was a calculated decision to break into a more dynamic, yet uncharted financial landscape. This was a move that would prove to be pivotal in the later part of his life. Nevertheless, the fast-paced environment of the trading floor seemed to awaken something in him. In this chaotic environment, Arthur's bold approach for risk-taking quickly set him apart. He mastered the art of arbitrage, an old but proven trading strategy to find pockets of opportunities from the market inefficiencies. Arthur was so good at it that he managed to get his first million by the age of 25. Yet beneath the surface, the constant pressure from the trading floor began to take a toll. So Arthur searched for a world where he can let the stress of his profession melt away. And he found it in the world of extravagant parties and lavish spending. <laughs> This lifestyle eventually led to his departure from Deutsche Bank in 2011. Another brief stint in Citibank followed, but also ended in a similar fashion. His on-the-job performance was always excellent, but his erratic behavior and lack of emotional maturity ended this chapter of his life. Bankers tell you everybody has a bullet with their name on it, Arthur once said, reflecting on his banking career. But one thing is clear for Arthur, he's ready to move on to a bigger stage. Still in his late 20s, Arthur took time for deeper self-reflection while pondering his next move. And when I lost my job, I was like, well, I want to do something different. 
And then, oh, I heard about this Bitcoin thing. What is it? So I just started reading everything I could about it. Read the white paper, uh, read whatever research there was out there at the time. And then I was like, okay, well, how do you trade Bitcoin? Remember that this was 2013. Bitcoin had only existed for four years and was barely known outside of a small circle of tech enthusiasts. But Arthur was totally captivated by it. Soon, thanks to his experience in trading arbitrage, he began to notice the inefficiencies of the early Bitcoin market. So Arthur started to exploit the loophole, which was made possible due to his earlier decision to be based in Asia. I literally could walk out of my apartment with a bag of cash, go to the bank, <laughs> deposit the bank in my bank account in Hong Kong, um, wire it to these exchanges based in Hong Kong, like Bitfinex and some of the other ones that were based there, buy Bitcoin at the dollar international price, send it to you no know, Chinese exchanges, sell it for RMB. Then I go to the bus station, I get on the bus with my backpack, to withdraw my cash from the bank, and then I go back across the border, and then I make, you know, 20 to 40 percent. It doesn't take long for the opportunist in him to realize that this booming industry could use a better and more intuitive way to facilitate the users. However, it wasn't until his encounter with Samuel Reed, his future co-founder, that he began to bring this idea to fruition. Reed, a web development expert and fellow Bitcoin enthusiast, was the missing piece to Arthur's puzzle. His technical ability complemented Arthur's financial knowledge and know-how, forming a duo with a shared goal, to revolutionize the crypto trading experience. But Arthur didn't just stop at that. Well, people speculate in everything. I'm sure if we put some chickens on the stage here, I put up a QR code, and I let you bet on which chicken was gonna win, we would have probably a million dollars traded in the next five minutes. <laughs> Human beings love to speculate. He realized that if there's one thing that Bitcoin is known for, it's the extreme fluctuation on its price. And as an experienced trader who is very familiar with volatility, he believed that there should be ways for others to take advantage of it. So in the typical Arthur Hayes style, an idea came to his mind during a wild night out in 2014. An idea that would turn into a product that would not only redefine how millions engage with the crypto market, but also be the focal point of his downfall later in life, a perpetual swap. So what is a perpetual swap? Well, it is best to explain through an example. Let's say you have $1,000 in your account, and Bitcoin is currently trading at $20,000. Based on your deep analysis, you think that it will rise significantly in the future. So you decide to enter into a perpetual swap to take advantage of this. Using your $1,000, you open a Bitcoin position with 100 times leverage provided by the platform. This means that your $1,000 position is now recognized as $100,000, or equivalent to a five full Bitcoins exposure. And so let's say that the price of Bitcoin rose by $300. With the five Bitcoins exposure that you now have, it means that your position directly captures a $1,500 profit from your $1,000 of your capital, a whopping 150% return on investment. However, this goes the other way around too. If the Bitcoin price declined by $200, your total loss will be $1,000, effectively wiping out your total capital. So you can see how this product is really popular among the traders and speculators in the crypto market. It can amplify your gain, but it can also clean your account empty. Now that you understand the appeal of this product, let's see how Arthur made his name from it. Hello, my name is Arthur Hayes, and I am the co-founder and CEO of BitMEX. This tutorial is meant to explain our new trading interface. And so Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange, also known as BitMEX, came to life. Interestingly, Arthur registered BitMEX in Seychelles, a small tropical island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. It was an unconventional choice, but a clear and calculated one. Little did he know that this choice would later bring huge repercussions to the whole crypto industry. Well, back to the present. Arthur brought in Ben Delo in mid-2014 to complete the founding team. With a background in trading software development, Ben's task was to help to develop their flagship product, the Perpetual Swap. The trio worked tirelessly out of Samuel Reed's compact Hong Kong bedroom, pouring everything to get BitMEX off the ground by late 2014. But it was not until 2015 that they start to gain traction. Words of its unique perpetual swap began permeating the crypto circles, putting BitMEX on the map. Within months, 
BitMEX facilitated over $1 million of daily Bitcoin trading as traders sought to hedge the massive price swings during that year. By 2016, the crypto world was already buzzing with much more activities. The steady rise of Bitcoin had managed to attract even more curious individuals. BitMEX welcomed this change with open arms and saw its average daily trading volume soar exponentially. But it was not until 2017 that Arthur and the team firmly established themselves in the big league. The price of Bitcoin rose more than 15-fold that year, capturing headlines and drawing in waves of new investors and speculators. This was the year of the crypto boom, with thousands of new cryptocurrencies created, each promising revolutionary use cases. Arthur and BitMEX continued doubling down on their product, innovating and optimizing to capture the market's craze. By the end of 2017, BitMEX accounted for an astonishing 15% of all global Bitcoin transactions, an extraordinary achievement by Arthur and his team in just three years. Well, for us, we do good volume on up days and even better volume on aggressive down days. So in 2018, we've actually tripled what we did in 2017 already. So we're having a great year. As BitMEX success soared, so did the wealth of its founders. But by this time, you could probably guess what happened to Arthur. The newfound fortune reopened the door to a glamorous lifestyle that he always dreamed of. From chartering Mediterranean yachts to flashing a brand new Lamborghini, he fully embraced the crypto wealth stereotype. With this escalated wealth, Arthur's confidence skyrocketed, but his patterns of wild and unprotected behavior also came back. You got rather fragrant with him, didn't you? I mean, he's a hater. He's a no-coiner. He's been he's bashed. A no-coiner. A no-coiner. Is that the new pejorative way, word for people who don't believe it? Someone this? who doesn't have any Bitcoin and watch the price rocket in their face over the past few years. So, it's what? A bit harsh, isn't it? I think so, <laughs> but I think it's true. <laughs> his days of intellectual bullying, something that he's known for since his Wharton days, resurfaced with greater intensity. His public appearance became a lot more colorful, debating crypto skeptics and making offhand remarks about the law and U.S. regulators. Not only that, it was very apparent that Arthur really enjoyed these exchanges, often engaging with a boldness that bordered on recklessness. This attitude climaxed at the 2019 Asia Blockchain Summit in Taipei, where Arthur found himself debating Noriel Robini, a distinguished professor and an outspoken Bitcoin skeptic. The debate was intense, with both sides exchanging jabs at each other. It makes 100 times leverage. So what? But in one pivotal moment, carried away by the intensity of the exchange. Arthur went off to make a statement that drew laughter and raised eyebrows at the same time. A statement that marked the beginning of a dramatic reversal in his life. But you will understand that in the scale of global regulation, the SEC New York, uh, the regulatory authorities in London or in Frankfurt are on a slightly different scale than the regulatory authorities in the Seychelles. It just costs more to bribe them. Costs more to bribe them? Yeah. But that's not really an answer, is it? It is an answer. What do you think? So how much are you? Banks? So how much are you paying to bribe the Seychelles authorities? A coconut. On the morning of October first, twenty twenty, the U.S. legal system took a step that would forever change not only Arthur's life, but also the whole crypto industry. The acting U.S. attorney, alongside the head of the FBI's New York office, announced the indictment of BitMEX founders Arthur Hayes, Sam Reed, and Ben Delo. They were charged with violating the Banking Secrecy Act by failing to establish a robust anti-money laundering program. Remember Seychelles, the tropical paradise where Arthur had strategically incorporated BitMEX? It wasn't just for coconut and scenic views. Seychelles is known for its relaxed regulations and tax benefits, a haven for businesses seeking less regulatory scrutiny. Arthur had always been vocal that BitMEX was not catering to U.S. customers, as doing so would require them to follow the strict requirement from the U.S. regulators. This move made Arthur believe that he and BitMEX were untouchable by the U.S. government. However, Arthur's previous comment when debating Rubini seemed to awaken them. Unknown to Arthur, the FBI and CFTC have spent countless months building a case against BitMEX. They believe that a large portion of BitMEX's business indeed came from U.S. customers and that the platform's anti-money laundering measures were merely just for show. Ironically, 
the nail in the coffin came from leaked internal chats between the founders. These conversations showed the founders deliberately choosing to bypass the stringent customer checks. The evidence was compelling, stacking heavily against BitMEX and its leaders. Yet, this legal move sparked a wave of controversy within the financial industry. Many saw it as a double standard, a strategic play by the regulators to announce their grand arrival into crypto, an area that previously enjoyed zero oversight. Well, they may be onto something here. It's common knowledge that big banks such as Barclays, BNP, HSBC, and Standard Chartered have all been accused of similar wrongdoings, but all of them get away with a typical slap on the wrist and some fines. Historically, such cases have rarely led to the personal indictment of company founders, and so this raised a question. Did the US authorities deliberately target Arthur, the flashiest and the loudest among crypto players, as a warning shot to others? Regardless of the controversy, this indictment was a game changer, not only for Arthur, but also the whole crypto industry. For nearly six months after the charges, Arthur skillfully evaded arrest by staying in Singapore, a country without an extradition treaty to the US. But in April 2021, amidst whispers of possible leniency, he unexpectedly surrendered to U.S. authorities. In the end, the prosecutor dropped seven out of the eight initial charges against him, resulting in a six-month home detention and a $10 million fine. Having stepped down from BitMEX just a few months earlier, Arthur began his sentence quietly and away from the public eye. The bold tweets and commentaries he was known for seemingly faded into silence. However, it wasn't long before his flair for dramatics resurfaced. In April 2022, amidst the catastrophic UST stablecoin collapse and the surprising bankruptcy of three Arrow Capital, the good old Arthur stepped back to the spotlight as boldly as ever. Through a series of tweets and public appearances, he publicly accused them of market manipulation and poor risk management. Because essentially it's an economic game of chicken. You know, yep. How much money can I make before it blows up? And humans don't learn. We do the same thing over and over and over again. And, you know, Terra was not the first one of these, and it won't be the last. Um, hopefully, the next version doesn't lose $40 billion in three days, but, you know, <laughs> we're all human. The chaos in the market seems to invigorate him, as he took center stage in the drama, making headlines once again. <laughs> Bold market commentary? Check. Public debate with critics? Of course. Wild parties at public conferences? Absolutely. True to his nature, Arthur showed that a showman's spirit never really fades. And speaking of dramatic crypto tales, if you think Arthur's story is wild, check out this video about Do Kwon and the $60 billion USD stablecoin collapse that took place almost overnight. You will understand why Arthur could not hold himself back from commenting on it. See you in another video.